Um, okay. Daryl, thank you very much for spending time. Um, I hope you understand we have uh, started this online, um, we have started online classes because of the COVID-19 incidents here in Pakistan. We don't know how long it will last, so this is the first trial lecture I'm uploading. So I'm going to repeat one of our previous lectures um, in that, that I have delivered uh, during your regular class. Uh, so I would, uh, I would upload a brief lecture today. Uh, that would talk about we, we would talk about the transcription factors. So we have already discussed this that uh, Let's start. We have already discussed it that the transcription factors uh, Are basically these are proteins which have the ability to bind to the DNA and after binding to the DNA They can either upregulate or down regulate the transcriptional activity of certain genes and there there are uh, particular regions on the DNA um, uh, there are particular sequences on the DNA where these proteins can interact. So these proteins are known as uh, transcription factors while the regions on the DNA where these proteins bind these regions are known as transcription factor binding sites. Uh, we discussed that uh, transcription factors are of two types general transcription factors and specific transcription factors. So general uh, transcription factors are non-discriminatory uh, they would always be there wherever there's some sort of uh, transcriptional activity like your uh, transcription factor 2T, 2A, uh, etc. which are almost always needed. And specific transcription factors, they are specific to uh, certain genes. Um, it depends upon the enhancer operator sequences of the genes uh, that which transcription factors would bind to them. So they generally bind to the, to the regulatory sequences. Uh, we also discussed that there are two types activators and repressors so as the name indicates activators upregulate the transcriptional activity and repressors down regulate the transcriptional activity and activators generally bind to the enhanced regions while repressors bind to the operator sequences we also discussed that there are two generally uh, two uh, domains uh, these uh, transcription factors are uh, uh, they're composed of one is the DNA binding domain it's the domain that interacts or, uh, with the uh, with the DNA region for example here so it, if this this protein has got two regions one region uh, of the protein that interacts with the DNA that's uh, the DNA binding domain and then the uh, we have this second which is uh, second domain that that is called as a transcriptional activation domain. So this is the other domain, the other side of the protein, which may interact with another protein or some other region of the DNA and affect the transcriptional activity. Um, so uh, let's look at this slide. Uh, what we see here at the top is the uh, chromatin, which is condensed, and at the bottom what we see, this is the chromatin, which is relaxed. And as we have previously discussed, that the first step uh, in in transcriptional act in regulation of gene expression is the uh, is the is the chromatin remodeling. So you can either relax the chromatin if you want the genes to get expressed, or you can compress it if you want to turn the genes off. So uh, when w w the genes which are um, uh, or the regulatory sequences which get embedded into this chromatin, they cannot be accessed by the transcription uh, by the transcription machinery, and this is the reason that the genes in this com uh, uh, compacted or condensed form of uh, in this compact or condensed form of chromatin, uh, they cannot be expressed because they are not accessible by the transcriptional uh, machinery. So in order to express these these genes, what we need to do first of all, we need to relax the chromatin. So there are certain activators or certain transcription factors which can bind to certain regions on this condensed form of chromatin and then relax this chromatin. And when this chromatin is relaxed, then this chromatin becomes um, accessible or the DNA becomes accessible for the transcriptional machinery. Different types of mediator proteins, different uh, the RNA molecule, the general transcription factors, all of these proteins can now, now bind to their uh, respective regulatory sequences and they can uh, activate the transcriptional activity. While uh, uh, as far as the role of uh, repressors is concerned, they are going to do exactly the other way around. So after binding to a relaxed DNA, which was undergoing some sort of uh, transcriptional activity, so if the gene needs to be turned off, these repressor proteins after binding to the relaxed uh, chromatin, uh, they condense the chromatin. So after condensation of the uh, 
uh, chromatin and chromatin is condensed into this form by the repressors. Uh, these mediator proteins, these activators or enhancers uh, that, that bind to the enhancer regions, the general transcription factors, etc., uh, they cannot bind to their regulatory sequences because these regulatory sequences become hidden inside this condensed form of uh, chromatin. So, the first thing uh, you need to do if you want a gene to, uh, to be expressed uh, would be to expose the regulatory sequences so that different types of molecules which are involved in uh, initiation of transcription can bind to their respective uh, regulatory sequences. So, that's, the, that's what the activators and pressors do. Activators uh, relax the chromatin and they uh, upregulate the transcription activity while repressors can inhibit the binding of the RNA polymerase or they can inhibit the transcription activity and they also have the ability to uh, condense the chromatin so that the genes become turned off. Uh, we also then we, we, we talked about determination of the transcription factor binding sites. So basically uh, if we want to uh, if we want to know where does a particular protein or transcription factor bind to the DNA, we can use DNA fingerprinting. So this is a very simple phenomenon. Uh, we can take the DNA and uh, we can uh, label the DNA at one end so that we can observe it um, in the gel. And uh, then we can use some sort of DNA um, enzyme, uh, DNA enzyme, for example, DNA's one in this case. Uh, what this DNA is, is going to do, this has the tendency or ability to cleave the DNA at almost every nucleotide. So in this example, for example, these are, these are roughly seven or eight uh, nucleotides and then this is a protein uh, which is bound to the DNA from let's say eighth to sixteenth uh, nucleotide and then the, uh, the, the rest of the nucleotides are not covered by this protein. So when we add, uh, uh, add a DNA as an enzyme, to um, uh, to this DNA uh, molecule which is uh, um, which is bound by these proteins uh, in the presence of these proteins what this DNA is going to do it will cleave this DNA into different fragments so all those fragments um, which are not bound by the protein all those regions all those nucleotides which are not bound by the protein can be cleaved by this uh, uh, by this DNA so you can have uh, fragments of the of the DNA which are one nucleotide long, two nucleotide long, three nucleotide long, four, five, six, and seven nucleotide long. And then you are going to have the fragments which are 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20 nucleotide long. But what you are not going to have is perhaps a nine nucleotide long DNA fragment, a 10 nucleotide long DNA fragment, 11 nucleotide, 12 nucleotide, 13 nucleotide, 14 nucleotide seven or eight nucleotides in the middle are missing so you're not going to have uh, fragments in this uh, you're not going to see the fragments with this length and the reason uh, why we don't see these fragments for example if you look at bands on the gel this is how they appear you either have these smaller bands or larger bands but not the bands in the middle and the region and the reason why you don't have these bands is because um, is because uh, this region of the DNA was occupied by the transcription factor which was bound to the DNA and this protein did not let the DNA's enzyme cleave the DNA in the middle here. So this is a, uh, this is a real picture of a transcription factor uh, which was bound to, um, to, 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 to a DNA uh, roughly 60 nucleotides from the RNA uh, uh, from the RNA synthesis site. Um, um, you can go uh, you, 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 you can look at this uh, sequence for example here uh, these are uh, different fragments of the DNA and you can see here in the middle uh, you do not see any bands with this lens and the reason why we don't see this is because in this this, this because this region was occupied by that particular um, transcription factor and this is the same DNA fragment but without a protein so you can see all these different fragments are present and thus we can count the number of nucleotides or we can identify the region of the DNA which could be occupied by that particular uh, transcription factor. Um, as we have previously discussed that there are uh, two things we have one is the transcription factor and the second thing is transcription factor binding sites. So what you see on the table here are the different uh, regulatory proteins these are the names of the proteins and these are the DNA sequences that they can recognize 
and here are the different strains for example bacteria uh, different species bacteria yeast drosophila and mammals uh, some of these uh, uh, regulatory molecules are uh, well known to you for example lacrypressor we have already studied this in lacrop in lacropron uh, catabolite activated protein or cap we have studied this uh, and then you might also be familiar with bicoid gene which determines the anterior or posterior uh, symmetry in a drosophila uh, you're also aware of p53 uh, gene is the defense angel so uh, and these are the different dna sequences that are recognized by these transcription factors for example lac repressor when binds to its uh, uh, to its, its uh, when binds to the dna um, uh, on the operator sequence the this must be the operator sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime prime and this should be the sequence of the uh, operator uh, region um, and then lac repressor would be able to recognize the sequence and bind to it uh, as far as uh, binding of cap or catabolite activator protein is concerned this is for example the sequence that would be recognized by cap so wherever cap finds this sequence on the dna cap is going to bind to that particular sequence so in this case this would be the dna binding domain for cap and this is the dna binding domain for lac repressor the same is true for lambda repressors the same is uh, true for gcn4 the same same is true for bicoid sp1 sp1 myod we will study this later uh, this gene and then uh, this is the sequence that will be recognized by uh, p53 gene um, so um, what we discussed today uh, was a repetition of uh, what you have uh, already studied in your regular class so it was a it's a pretty small first lecture I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it and you could understand it you could follow me um, perhaps I was going a bit faster but uh, uh, the reason is uh, to uh, to convey maximum information in shortest possible time so that the um, uh, data is not uh, uh, the data for your lecture is not uh, exaggerated so I, I, will, I, I would try to keep this si size of the lecture smaller so that it's easier for you to download and uh, uh, and the good thing is you can listen to it again and again and if there are any questions you can post these questions to me and I would uh, I would like to answer these questions okay thank you very much